But kind of funny how the more I look at it, the more I'm like, what, what did I do? Why did I do this? I even said no at first. And then I let myself kind of get talked back into this deal. But it's just, it's done now. You know what I mean? I just, I could not have it. I saw a crappy boat trailer with all the red flags, including the boat. And, you know, I just said, sold. You know, I just, I just can't not. I'm like a bull. I just run right towards red flags. What can I say? As if I didn't have enough stuff going on and uh, enough boats already, I went and found myself the cheapest Boston Whaler, I promise, on the market. And the key thing is here that it came with a really cool twin I-beam aluminum trailer, which is really what I'm after. So this boat actually has a really cool backstory that we will get into a little bit later. But, but let me explain to you my thought process here, because I'm sure there's some people out there that have a similar thought process as me. The deal is I bought this boat super cheap with the trailer have a 16 foot Alumacraft boat actually the exact the actual boat that I had when I was a kid that really got me into a lot of the stuff that I love to do on the water now anyway that boat needs a trailer it's sitting in a guy's yard up the street I got to get it out of there I've been trying to find a decent trailer but I tell you what trailers are pretty hard to come by and I'm just not in a position to spend a bunch of money or buy a new one right now I just need a kind of a round town trailer it would fit my boat perfectly so I bought this boat and the trailer for $400. And I know what you're thinking. That is a screaming deal. And you're right. I bought the cheapest Boston Whaler on the market by a long shot. All right. But I tell you what, this boat has had kind of a hard life. It's had some pretty hard miles. I've put some hard miles on this boat myself. I bought this boat off a friend of mine. This boat was the light, uh, lighthouse tender boat for I think Lighthouse of the Chesapeake or something. It was like the floating lighthouse in Virginia uh, at the mouth of the Chesapeake Bay. This boat got hit with a firework, okay? And it caught on fire. And so it went up for sale. My buddy bought it for $800, I think in, I don't know, the early 2000s or something like that. He fixed it up and used it for fishing for a really long time. After that, it came back up here to Pasadena and it was retrofitted by the same guy to use as a tender boat for the Mr. Trash Wheel machines in Baltimore City. So this boat had push chocks on it and a center console and I think a 70 horsepower, 90 horsepower Yamaha, I think a 70 horsepower. We used it for fishing and some, but it was mostly a workhorse, all right? So this boat has definitely been ridden hard and put away wet for its entire life. And we actually all called this boat Patches because there is patches in the floor, patches on the sides, patches on the gunnels, patches on the bottom. She has been wrecked and put back together more times than any of us can even count. Whoever buys this has to understand what it is, okay? And the hell it's been through and the story behind it. I'm just trying to get the trailer basically for free. It's not really free, nothing is ever free actually the amount of time that I'm going to spend doing this swap and trying to sell the boat and towing it around and fixing the tongue jack and all this stuff, I'd be better off just going and paying money for a better trailer and better working order and having it done and over with. But for whatever reason, that is just not my nature. I just have to do things the hard way. I have to. I see it as, oh man, $400. I could buy the boat and the trailer and then I'll sell the boat for $400. Somebody will get a good deal on that and then I'll have a trailer. But in reality, I spent a whole day messing with this thing, taking it up here, fixing the tongue jack on it. And then I got to spend a day getting the boat off, finding a guy that wants to buy it without a trailer. And then the trailer doesn't have lights. It needs lights and the tires might be messed up. Who knows? I, this is just a typical, typical Luke move. In reality, just go buy a better one, spend a little more money right now and be done and over with it. Don't have to mess with it. But I tell you what, it's just, I don't know why. I'm just a glutton for punishment. I really can't help myself when I think I see a deal that I'm losing money, not buying. So let's give a little tour of patches here. Like I said, I have some personal history with this boat. I drove this boat for quite a while, pushing dumpster barges around uh, Baltimore City for the trash wheels. Here we have a little bit of a fiberglass patch. And see this boat, it didn't have to look pretty. It just had to float. It was a straight up work boat. So this thing, 
didn't really matter too much. It was just glass on there to keep it from peeling. You know, paint was paint was something that wasn't quite necessary to us at the time. Anyway, go down underneath. She's got some patches down here where, you know, maybe had a little crack or a pinhole and had to grind it out, patch it back up so she'd float. It's really not, really not in the worst shape. I mean, it's got good bones, but you just have to understand what it is. I could not throw a coat of paint on this thing and sell it to somebody for more than I know it's worth. And part of that is just because I know all the hell it's been through and I've put it through some hell myself. She's got some patches back here. But I tell you what, I mean, it's a solid boat and it's not rotten. The, the transom and everything is solid. It's in good shape. I mean, they were using it up until the day they got a replacement boat for it. The floor really is not in as bad a shape as you might think. We'll hop up inside here. These uh, vintage junk fishing rods were uh, included in the sale. But the floor really is not all that bad. I mean, there is not really any soft spots in the floor, except for right here. The floor is definitely wrecked right here. In reality, it is really not a bad boat for the money. But for somebody, even knowing everything that's wrong with this boat, I guarantee $400 is a great deal. And this is going to make an awesome boat for somebody. It's just not me. We've had our time with her. It's time to move on to the next one. Take a look at this trailer. The trailer that was such a good deal, I just couldn't pass it up. So it's not really too bad. It's cool that it's twin I-beam aluminum. It did have a jack on here when I got it that didn't work. And I didn't know that until I tried to get this thing off by myself and I couldn't. So I actually had to take two jacks, a jack that I found over in a scrap pile and the one that was on here, take them apart and build one that does work. I didn't really fix it, but I did get it working. Uh, the stanchion, I guess they call this or whatever. I mean, it's on there, you know, this is dry rotted. It's not the best thing in the world, but it does work. Go down here, we have uh, a plethora miscellaneous wires that all do nothing because none of the lights actually work. I'm not even sure they're on there. Some pieces of uh, some old truck tires uh, and duct tape. Oh no, that's not duct tape. That's a piece of a seat belt with a screw through it. That's pretty nice actually, I, that's clever. I wish I would have thought of that myself. One roller down there that the boat isn't even touching. That's exactly not how that's supposed to work. Uh, and then looks like some uh, old shag carpet out of somebody's grandmother's house with a rotten piece of wood. Uh, this trailer also has like torsion bar suspension. So instead of having a leaf spring, it's got a torsion bar in it. This fender, which is most certainly homemade. Uh, this, I asked my friend, I said, uh, what is that from? He said, I have no idea. We found it in the scrap pile. We used it to hold the fender on, so... There she lay, and it's got these tiny little like wide tires. He said that this is a great around town trailer, but he's tried to take it to Maine and Florida for fishing, and he said he's never not had a problem with this trailer. So naturally, I just couldn't not buy it myself. Uh, it's got these rings, I guess, so you can strap the thing to the trailer, so if you lose the trailer off the back of the truck, you lose the boat too. Uh, and these boards that stick a little far past the actual frame. But I actually don't think that's the worst thing in the world. Uh, I don't know. I'm not really sure. I don't really know how, how else you would do it. It kind of makes sense. I guess the wheels could stand to be a little further astern, but that's just how she's built, I guess. At least it's not rusted because it's aluminum. It's not in the best shape in the world, but I've certainly seen worse. This just looks like a, uh, I, <laughs> this is like a garden perimeter board. Those like slightly rounded ones just kind of crudely laid on top of like a four by six, I guess. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's looking pretty good. So I know lots of you are now thinking, wow, this is so cool. He's going to restore this Boston Whaler. Uh, no, not me, not this guy. I got six other boats. I don't need a seventh. 
I do need a seventh. No, 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 I don't. That's just the intrusive thoughts trying to creep back in. I don't need a seventh boat. I'm going to get rid of this boat. I actually found the perfect guy for this boat, okay? He knows the story. He understands the situation. He knows that I bought it for the trailer, for the whole thing for $400. He's going to give me 400 bucks for the boat, all right? So then I effectively get my trailer for free. Uh, he actually lives right in town, very close to me. I met him the other day, and boy, was that a mistake on his end. We met one day, and the very next day, I called him up. I said, Wayne, listen, man, I got a deal of a lifetime for you. Actually, Wayne, you're going to lose money not taking this deal. I said, look, man, I got a 17-foot Boston Whaler, the cheapest one on the Internet. I promise, and I am willing to let you in on this deal because I like you. And he said, wow, that's really cool, man. I was just looking at a Boston Whaler just like that with the front end was wrecked on Facebook. And he said it was $800. I said, Wayne, listen, man, I got one that floats and I will dri drive it to your house and help you get it off the trailer for half that price. Of course, being the wise businessman Wayne is, he knew that he could not pass up a deal just that good. Wayne is the sucker, I mean, the guy that I found to buy this Boston Whaler here. Wayne, what do you think of this new boat? It's a new boat. I love new boats. The best day. We're both having our best day right now. That's true. Because the best days of owning a boat, everybody knows, it's the day you buy a boat and the day you sell a boat. That's so you're right. having your best day. I'm having my best day. Look, it's a Boston Whaler. It's a, I don't have one of these. That's right. Hey, you do now, I man. I do. I'll tell you what, this is, she's a fine vessel. Right I here. haven't taken a look at it up close yet. I'm hoping it's okay. Oh, it's fine. I wouldn't look at it too close. Okay. You know what I mean? She looks good from maybe like a little further back. She's a 50-footer <laughs> for sure. Wait, what's this right here? Uh, I wouldn't look at that too that? far, man. That's just extra fiberglass. You're getting you're getting more than you bargained for. We did already shake on it. Yeah, that's true. All right. Load her up? Yeah, let's load her up. Let's Sounds do it. good. Let's do it. And Wayne... He also has a YouTube channel, Wayne the Boat Guy. I'll tag him in the description down there. But he's going to do a whole bunch of cool stuff with this boat on his channel. So if you're interested in this boat, the cheapest Boston Whaler here, you can follow it over to Wayne the Boat Guy's channel and see. I have no idea what he has planned for this thing. I got uh, big plans. Big plans. Big plans, he says. <laughs> so you can watch him do whatever. He also has the task of getting... <laughs> this boat off of the trailer without a forklift or anything like that <laughs> so that really ought to be entertaining i'm sure you're probably gonna have a video about how to yeah. get get a boat off a trailer maybe i don't know yeah i might have to make a video about how to get this boat off this trailer it's wayne here ignored all five of the red flags that i uh what red flag no red flags wayne there ain't nothing here can't see it from my house you know what i mean <laughs> it looks it looks seaworthy yeah probably I, looks great in the video oh yeah it probably does look great in the video it looks great in real life Hey, it's got fishing rods. Hey, I tell you what, this just became the best boat because it now is my friend's boat. And everybody knows the best boat is a friend's boat, right? It's got fishing rods. Oh, yeah, those are complimentary, Wayne. Don't mention oh, it, man. Oh, man, this those thing is getting house. better every day. I know, you could start a whole new fishing channel with these fishing rods that I so generously gifted you. <laughs> man, I got the best part of this deal. I know, you really did, you know? And... And I didn't fall down getting in and out of it, too. I know, This I know. boat's already winning on my list. It is. It is. It checks all the boxes. <laughs> I don't know whose boxes, but <laughs> apparently Wayne's. Wayne, I can tell you ain't no crabber because uh, you're putting a ratchet strap over this boat that's clearly falling off the trailer. It looks fine to me. I can't see it from my house. But it looks good if there's a strap on it. You know what I mean? So you just take this, stick her through there. Stick that around the bunk. You know what I mean? Oh man, I learned something today. Uh -huh. There right, you man. go, mint. <laughs> oh yeah, I can relate to that, holding on by a thread. Not really doing anything, but you got everybody else fooled. <laughs> Looks about right to me. <laughs> I got my free trailer here and this is what I needed it for. This is the actual boat that I had when I was a kid. It's still in the neighborhood and I just bought it back 
whether that's a good idea or not. And she looks like she's in a little worse shape than she was when I had her when I was in high school and maybe, maybe middle school. I think I got it in high school, but, uh, I, I'm probably just buying nostalgia back here. I'm probably going to regret this, but it like, it came up for sale and it's the actual boat. And this boat plays a big part in my story of how I got to where I'm at. So I had to have it back. So uh, the bottom, it looks like electrolysis has got to a fair amount of this old girl. But uh, who needs these things? You know what I mean? As long as uh, she don't leak too, too bad. But it's got a few patches on it. Uh, it's got a straight hole right there. And uh, definitely got some rivets falling out of it. It's a, I think it's a 16-foot Alumacraft from like the 60s or something. Here's a patch some rivets where it's been sort of repaired dents but i tell you what i put a lot of the dents in this boat this this boat has been through some hell i've taken this thing everywhere caught crabs fish and had the time of my life she looks about like i remember it although it might be not so great that you can actually see daylight through the bottom but that's not deterring me she looks good Here she is in all her glory. I actually stuck this sticker on there when I had it still on there. Panama City Beach, Ron John Surf Shop. And boy, I remember it being in a little better shape when I had it the first time. I remember thinking that I couldn't believe I had a boat that was 16 feet long because my other one was eight foot. The first boat I had was only eight feet long. I spent a lot of time sitting right here in this very seat with my Johnson Evinrude. Actually, it was an Evinrude, uh, 15 horsepower with the slant cowling. I remember thinking, I cannot believe how big this boat is. I have 16 foot of boat now. Seems a little smaller now, but I like it. It's cool. It's bringing me back to a very weird time in my life. <laughs>